Good morning, church. Are you ready for something a little bit controversial? You see, there are lessons that you can learn from the structure of the text of the Bible, not just from the content. I want to show you one of those lessons you can learn today. It's a little bit controversial because it involves something that happens in between the King James Version and the modern translations. And anyway, it happens in Mark chapter 16. Let me show it to you. In Mark chapter 16, we read the story of the resurrection of Jesus. And it just so happens that very few Easter messages are preached from Mark chapter 16 because it's a little bit different than the other accounts. Let me show it to you. Mark 16, beginning in verse 1, it says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. I always like to make this joke. They had to go on Sunday to anoint Jesus' body because the guys who did it on Friday probably didn't do a very good job. Women always had to correct what the guys uh, messed up. Anyway, that's another story for another time. Verse 2, very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now, you're probably wondering why I stopped reading at verse 8. Well, if you have a modern translation of the Bible, you can look at that line, Mark chapter 16, verse 8, and immediately after it in the main text, or maybe in a footnote under at the bottom, you'll see a note that says, that the earliest and most reliable manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark don't have the rest of the verses. They don't have verse 9 through the end. If you're looking in the King James Version, you'll see a whole lot more. You'll see verses about Jesus' resurrection appearances. You'll see some verses about Jesus' promises to the disciples. And you'll see some verses about uh, Jesus' command that the disciples go and share the good news with others. These are things that we're familiar with from the other Gospels. It's just in Mark chapter 16, we get this weird little footnote that says the earliest manuscripts don't have those verses. Let me give you a little bit of background. You see, we've got a lot of Greek and Latin manuscripts and a lot of people from early on in the history of the church who quoted the Gospel of Mark. It was a very important Gospel. And so we've got a lot of people who quoted from the Gospel of Mark. And the earliest of all those quotations... And the earliest of all those manuscripts end the gospel at verse 8. Now, there are a lot of different versions that include other verses. And all the verses from 9 till the end have uh, extra interesting bits to them. You see, they're not in all the same order. The various versions that we have of the Gospel of Mark have these extra verses in different order and in different amounts. Some of them have all of them. Some of them have just a few of them. Some of them shift them around. We've got tons of different versions of the Gospel of Mark. And, and you might be asking the question, well, wait a minute. If we've got all these different versions of the Gospel, how do we know it's trustworthy? Well, I'm going to tell you why. You see, what we've done is we have gone through all of the study and all of the research to try to determine what's the oldest set of texts that we have. And we can determine with 99.9% .9 accuracy that Mark ended his gospel at verse 8. The question is, why do we have all the others? Why do we have all the other versions? Why do I, we have all the extra lines? Why does the King James Version have a whole bunch of extra verses and the modern versions don't? Well, I'll tell you why. It's because when I read verse 8, that didn't feel like a good end to the story. I'll read it again. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Who wants to end the story that way? 
every single one of us, when we read that line, we're like, but what happens next? What happens next? Give me some more to the story. And so that's why we like the versions that have a longer ending. That's why so many different longer endings were developed. But I think Mark had an angle when he wrote his gospel that he hinted at at the very beginning. You see, the first line of Mark's gospel says the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. His entire book was intended to be just a beginning. And then we come to this and we're like, that's not a very good end. Of course, it's not a very good end. Mark never wanted it to be the end. He wanted his book to be the beginning. See, here's our problem. We love to hear the Easter story, Jesus' resurrection. We like to have it all closed out together because when it's closed out together, it feels like a completed story. But Mark had a different angle in mind. You see, when we read this, we are left with the unsettling feeling that those women shouldn't have kept their mouths shut. Now, let's just, let me give you some historical context here. When Mark writes his gospel, he's writing his gospel in the 40s, probably. 40, which would put him about 10 years after Jesus' resurrection. And do you realize that in the 10 years from Jesus' resurrection to the time when Mark wrote his gospel, a lot of people have heard the story of Jesus' resurrection. We know that the gospel, according to Matthew, tells us that Jesus visited lots of people. And Luke tells us Jesus has visited lots of people. And Acts tells us that Jesus visited lots of people. And the story in Acts continues to describe all the things that happened between the 30s and the 40s. In fact, we don't learn that Mark is actually a real follower of Jesus until later on. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is this. The story of Jesus' resurrection has been circulated widely by the time Mark writes down his story. In other words, when he writes verse 8, everybody who reads verse 8 is going to know that those women didn't keep their mouths shut. Everyone is going to know that those women did tell the disciples. Everyone's going to know that the disciples did tell others. Everyone's going to know that the day of Pentecost happened. So why does Mark end his gospel at verse 8 saying they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid? Let me give you three reasons. Reason number one, Mark wants you to know that his story is just the beginning. He never wanted it to have an ending because it's only the beginning. The ending comes later. Number two, Mark wants you to feel a sense of tension about those women. The women kept their mouths shut. They didn't tell anyone because they were afraid. Mark wants you to feel in your gut that the story is incomplete. Mark wants you to feel in your gut that the women shouldn't have been afraid. Mark wants you to feel both of those things in your gut because number three, Mark wants you to finish the story. See, Mark wants the people who read his story to come to the end of his story with this sense of that can't be it. And with this sense of, no, don't keep your mouth shut. Tell someone. Because see, Mark wants you to finish the story by telling someone. Mark's gospel is the beginning of the good news of Jesus. And when Jesus rose from the dead, that's not the end of the story. When Jesus rises from the dead, that's beginning your part of the story. When Jesus rises from the dead, that's the beginning of the story that involves the followers of Jesus getting inspired by the story of Jesus and telling other people the good news of Jesus. You see, I think it's important that we end the Gospel of Mark at verse 8 so that you and I get convinced we need to finish it in our lives as we share it with others. I hope the same thing is true about you today, that you feel a need to finish the story in your life as you bring it to other people. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, would you help us
to be people who carry the beginning of the gospel in our hearts and bring it to fulfillment in how we live and who we share it with. Give us the courage today to use whatever means you give us, whatever opportunities you give us, to not be afraid and to not be bewildered, but to bring this message of the good news of Jesus to others. Thank you so much. We love you when we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Find a time, find an opportunity today to bring this good news to someone else so that the story doesn't end with verse 8. God bless you. Thank you.